and we noticed that they are uh, slaying the Friday goat, as we call it. Saturday now. Basically, they hang up this goat carcass here, and they, uh, they basically cook it right there in front of everyone. But we noticed something. Why did they waste all that fur? I know, we were talking about how like, you know, you've been in China so long that you don't actually care about all the dead animal parts all over the road. It's just like, why didn't they use it for something? It's such a waste, you Dude, know? let's grab it and make a coat. I'm not touching that. Hey, Law Winners, it's Lowdy6 here with another video. Hey, guys, what's poppin'? That's what people say on YouTube these days. They never say that. They actually do. Logan yeah. Paul does. I'm trying to learn from the best. Uh, yeah. It's all, for me, it's all about the, uh, you know, the content, not the clickbait. And that's what I learned from him. <laughs> so today, what we're gonna actually talk about is five things, or even our five things, uh, yeah. that uh, annoy us about living in China. It's kind of a compilation of a bunch of things in list form, so that makes it really, really good because everyone likes to watch like top fives. I find myself like through the night, like I'll be like, I gotta go to bed by midnight tonight. And I'll be like, the top five celebrities that slept with their brother's cousin. You know, like you watch those lists, you binge them. You know what I mean? <coughs> so we're, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you not? No. What? But I think... What do you watch, like chess compilations or something? Yeah, that's exactly what I watch. And the special thing is that my top five are gonna be very different than your top five. They're gonna be very different. It's not gonna be about chess. <laughs> <laughs> He's really into this. Uh, my first one is actually regional dialects, and this is something very dear to me because we actually live in a province with a lot of them. We live in Guangdong, which is uh, Canton, I guess we can call it. And of course, very famous for Cantonese. I don't speak Cantonese. I can understand it, but I can't speak it. And that's a big issue because my wife's family. family is Cantonese, so they speak Cantonese as a first language. And that is quite annoying because I can't really participate in the conversation. Right, so you're just sitting there at the dinner table just kind of Blank like... There. Yeah. Now it gets way worse when they start speaking regional dialects, which is are things like Huizhou dialect where we live, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also have things like Hakka. Yep. Hakka dialect. Now, when they start going into those, then I'm really doomed. I can't actually... Where are you? Walking around a puddle. The second thing I'm actually going to talk about is moving money out. And this is something that's bothering me right now, is that I have to make purchases and, you know, send money back home for different reasons. And getting money out of China, especially with the new kind of regulations about moving currency out, is so difficult. They limit the amount of US dollars are, that are allowed to be bought yeah. at banks and they're dying for more foreign currency to come in, right? right? So they're like, no, you can't do that. And they've actually banned foreigners from doing this. You have to use a Chinese person if you want to like move a large sum of money out of China. It's incredibly annoying. They do not want Chinese currency leaving China. Because a lot is. <laughs> a lot is, yeah. No, but, uh, you know, even, I mean, it doesn't bother me because I don't have any money to move around in the first place. <laughs> but well, you're like, lucky. Well, no, but it's, it's, but I mean, you know, like we might get paid from a different company from the West to do a video on something right. or maybe to put in some advertisements. Yeah. And it's, it's really, they can't pay us because PayPal right. does not work yes. with uh, Chinese currency. Um, you have to get a Chinese PayPal, which is then not compatible with the other ones. Exactly, so, like... so you're stuck with the same problem. <laughs> Number two, um, also, like, if you want to use the super uber awesome, very convenient ways to pay for stuff here, which is very convenient, by the way, way more convenient than the West, then you have to have a Chinese ID, which, which we, don't we don't have. have. So right. we're in a, a bit of a limbo. They don't want us to move our money out of China, and they also don't want us to do anything with their money here. So oh, yeah. we're kind of, uh, kind of screwed in that situation. Yeah. I'm really hungry. What do you say, we, we do old school style? What's up style? Let's go get some food, get some drinks, a little bit of naughty water. You're back in town, it's time to uh, kick it old school. Miss you, buddy. Miss you too. It's really sweaty, let's not do that ever again. Baby, you gotta stop throwing stuff around. We were about to film this restaurant, and actually they opened up a private room for us to be able to film it because it's too noisy here. And this crayfish and seafood restaurant, so we're gonna head into a private room and do a little private chat. We got the uh, VIP room. Yeah. That must have fallen into it. This place is nuts. Couches and all kinds of stuff. It's got a tea table, it's got dirty couches. <laughs> it's actually very, it's much worse than I thought it was. So we're gonna set up shot here and uh, the private room. This actually defeats the entire purpose of filming in the restaurant to get that ambiance. <laughs> Where would you like to film here in this wonderful scene? It looks like we're about to shoot a porn. <laughs> I kind of like the couch, dude. 
I don't know it. why. You watch a lot of backstage cast casting, don't you? You mean back room? If you're gonna get the <laughs> name right, get the name right, bro. Would you like the Persian throne of <laughs> that one Persian king guy? Or would you like the Roman throne of Imperiatus Asbestos Dystus? Well, asbestos is not good for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for Prince of Persia. Give me the Prince of Persia. Alright, I'll go with asbestos. This is like a this is like a church basement or something. <laughs> Do you have any sins? Yeah. Tell me your sins, boy. Father, um, please forgive me for I have sinned. This is weird. <laughs> so the next shot you'll see in 3, 2, 1 will be us together and we'll begin the episode. I have no idea what we're doing. 3, 2, 1. Are you gonna sit up that straight? Well, what the hell, dude? I don't to show know. Me up? This is such a weird spot to film. It is, but that's life now because we have to commit to what we just set up. The third one I actually want to talk about is the problem when you go to, a, especially a small town, small place, you end up in a small town and you can't stay in the hotels. And I actually did an entire video about this in depth, but I'll just touch on it right now. Right. Uh, go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. But every time I travel around China, I end up in a situation where if I don't want to stay in a hotel that's like $500 a night, then I get rejected. And actually there used to be this law that prevented foreigners from staying in cheap hotels in order to kind of bolster the economy, you know, give Chinese domestic tourism a little bit of a boost. They have cheaper hotels they can stay at. But it didn't work. This law doesn't exist anymore, by the way. It was completely repealed. And people still hold on to this idea in some of these smaller towns. They're like, no, I don't want to register a foreigner, so they're going to claim this law, basically. And this is absolute bullshit. The next point I want to hit, number four, is something that I find incredibly, incredibly annoying and that is Chinese medicine. <laughs> and I'm gonna get so much hate for this, but I have talked about this to death. Chinese people are incredibly defensive about this kind of thing. I mean, it is this idea to, to Chinese people that it's Western medicine versus Chinese medicine. They don't think of it as science versus ancient manuscripts <laughs> yeah. that their grandmother's grandmother told them about because that is usually what it boils down to. Speaking of boiling, I'm talking about boiling water. Yeah. Every Chinese person well, most Chinese people think that cold things are bad for your health. So that if you show up in a, on a day that's 40 degrees, like over 100 degrees out, they will give you a piping hot cup of water. And to us, that's absolutely blasphemous. We want a nice cold cup of water. It is, it is a, it, words against God. It's words against that. God. Like they actually will fight you to the death about yeah. why that's good for you. You got things like chi. They won't let you eat too many peanuts or fried things and they'll say, Oh, you're going to be Shanghua, which means that your chi is going to be so hot that you're going to, your chi will be on fire and you need to eat cucumbers to cool that down. We don't believe in chi. No. So for us, it's kind of difficult. It's not one of those things that you slowly get used to. I'm used to people telling me, don't eat that. It's bad for your chi. One thing I don't get used to is believing in that because you don't change your mind no. <laughs> when you grow up in a scientific family like myself. I mean, I've had, I've had videos about this in the past where people below are like, well, you don't understand this and this and this argument. but by and large, I do trust science and proven medicine and things that actually have proven to cure my symptoms and ailments rather than some weird herb or root that another province over in China doesn't believe in, but this one does. Because the water is a different chi. Yeah. Ridiculous. No, and you'll never be able to change their mind no. as well. Like I remember, you know, when I was younger, my mom used to, used to say, Oh, you know, it was winter in Canada, and she'd be like, well, come back inside, you're not wearing enough stuff, you'll catch right. a cold. Right. It's and that kind of rough. But you find out that's not true. That's not how colds work. For sure. Colds are from viruses, mom. Like, it's not from being cold because it has the same name. Yeah, but for us, we can change our minds. We grew up and we learn about it, and now we For know. sure, and it, actually, what you said actually makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of Westerners back then would think, oh, cold. I got a cold. I'm cold. It must come from each other, right? Because the name. That's how a lot of Chinese works. Yeah. A lot of things like auspicious things, like, um, the word for you, like fish, can also sound like wealth, right? So they think that's a lucky word. That is something we cannot get on board with. And that's something incredibly frustrating because it's not about like, oh, this person's trying to give you medicine and help you out. That's really nice. But at the end of the day, like a lot of this stuff is completely unfounded. And when it's forced on you, don't eat this, you can only eat this. 
when people genuinely care about and you feel like, oh, you're being really sweet, but at the end of the day, it's actual bullshit, yeah. it's really hard to get over. Or, or when something actually happens to you, right. and they're like, oh, drink this potato. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you're like, no, I'm hurt. I need medicine. <laughs> they're like, well, you know, this is 5,000 years of, of history but of potato drinking. So that you is better... what, you, what you get every time is, no, this is 5,000 years old. Yeah. That probably means it sucks. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, we didn't have the wheel, but I'm not going to go back to not using it just because it's the old way of doing things. <laughs> Square wheel. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we ever used that. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we just didn't have a wheel. analogy. Just... <laughs> Number five, my last one. Um, all the joking aside, and this was meant to be kind of a fun video, but the last one is quite serious, and that is um, that you'll always be a foreigner here. And mm. just the word that they use um, for foreigners, Waigoran, which means foreigner, right? An yeah. outside country person, okay. which is fine. It's fine. Would actually be pretty inflammatory in the West. You wouldn't walk around calling people foreigners to their face, right? Whereas yeah. the words that they use here, for example, they'll say, Niemen Waigoran, you foreign people. You foreign yeah, they people. group you up into... You know, Wamen Zhongwu. Yeah. Our Chinese people. They they like to create these groups. And I think this is probably changing amongst amongst the youngsters that go to university and things. But by and large, not just because of the, the pronouns they throw around. It's actually because of the actual sentiment. You can have friends that get to know you and they'll treat you like a human being and it's totally fine. You can have lots of Chinese friends and stuff. But society, being outside, walking out of your house and feeling like you're part of China it's in every happen. single day... That you're that that's proven wrong. Yeah. Every single day, people it's, are looking and saying, "Look, a here. foreigner. Yeah. Look, look at this. Oh, look, look! You're constantly being. It's everyone's pointing out that you're not from here all the time. Which honestly, that used to kind of get annoying, but then you get used you to it. Absolutely like absolutely get used to that. Like it, it won't, <laughs> people won't stare in like bigger cities no. usually, but like, you go know, to a smaller city and like doesn't matter but like sometimes you just want to go to walmart and you're wearing sweatpants and you, you just, just want to go buy shit pants. and you don't want everyone to look at you, you <laughs> exactly know what I mean? exactly so i mean just just that in general you don't you will never be accepted for i don't know you can't really immigrate here you can't really be part of society whereas probably in a western country especially in america or england or something like that you can kind of blend in because everyone looks like they're from different places anyway they'll just assume you're american anyway right so Put in the work here, you will be disappointed that you will never be Chinese. Not that you wanted to ever be Chinese, it's up to you. No, but you I think it would be nice to be, you know... To fit in. Everyone yeah. wants to fit in. I think right. it's a natural human desire. <laughs> Can we make this weirder? No. I know don't. what to do to make it weirder. Uh, let's switch up the shot. Uh -huh. We're going to go over to Prozzi's video, actually, and you are going to go, after you watch this, You are. I guarantee you, I'm going to put a curse on you right now, 100% guaranteed to go over to Prozzi's video to watch his top five annoying things about China, because those are just mine. Of course you agree with him, but you have a different list. I have a different list, yes. I'll see you in uh, your video. I'll see you there. I was going to do a sign-off, like, thank you so much, Slow Winners. I'll catch you on the next one. But because they're but obviously because going on to mine. they're going to go on to yours, I actually probably do my sign-off on your channel. So they're, what's going to happen right now is they're going to feel so... Oh my god, like that video didn't finish. It wasn't a loud six video. I didn't he didn't finish. He didn't he didn't do his sign up, but he's gonna do it on Prozzi's video. I'm gonna you go need that there. closure, so you need that closure. If you wanna see that closure, go Exactly, here. like a bad girlfriend, come on over to my channel. I'm not even gonna say bye. It's just Cut. stop.